What's going on everyone? Gilman with Levolti Stocks back with another NEO update video where we take a look at how NEO stock traded this past week. Key levels of support and resistance that we are looking at as well as some events that have happened recently, some catalysts that I think could really help push NEO up as well. So real quick, if you guys enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new and comment down below what your thoughts on NEO are and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. So let me hit record, we will get right into it. So um, if you guys have seen my videos from this past week, um, you know, you know, kind of the, the general price action that we are talking about. Um, so we had a little bit of a run up um, in the first couple days of the week, and then we hit the top end of the um, the line that we have here, and then we started to push right back down. Remember that that line is something that we have moved um, to see if that bull pennant continues to hold. So it's not the line that we had before, but that's okay. Um, we will take a look anyway. But before we do that, I want to cover a couple things that happened this past week, some things that I think could be potential catalysts for NEO um, moving into the future, and then we can kind of see what um, you know, that could mean for the company moving forward. So first things first was this news that came out that, you know, the Chinese EV maker Neo might be coming to America as this article suggests. And they are talking about, um, pretty much they, um, found a job posting on LinkedIn related to business planning for the U S market. Um, this posting is now closed, but you, who is the analyst that found this from Deutsche Bank, was saying that they were looking for someone to formulate an action plan to enter the US market. Now, this is very, very premature, right? Just because they are looking to hire someone to do this work does not necessarily mean that they are for sure going to be entering the US market, but the idea of that is exciting and it's a catalyst that I think we could look forward to. Um, so that could be, you know, like this article also suggests, right? This, again, is a d long way down the road, but B could be a potential game changer for NEO as it enters um, you know, the US market, which is a pretty big market, um, and especially as we are moving towards electric vehicles and as Tesla's starting to increase their sales, you know, it could really go head to head with um, you know, some of the other car companies that are looking to sell electric vehicles. So, I mean, it's early, as I've said, and they're not expecting this to happen until 2025, about four or five years out. Um, and they're talking about, you know, hey, there's a lot of political stuff going on between Beijing and Washington, D.C., but, um, you know, it's something that still could happen. This is a screenshot of what they're talking about, um, you know, American business strategies, da, 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 da. So I think it could be great, right? So, um, the other thing is that they could be moving into Norway, um, you know, European countries, which still could be a great, great move for the company um, in the long term. So that's something to look out for. Um, so that's that's going to be really interesting to see as well. Now, um, if we take a look at, you know, um, this this other article, it talks about how Neo is getting ready for kind of that le next leg higher. And we'll take a look at a couple of reasons why. The first one being that they are... Um, they're talking about, you know, kind of the tough year that they had um, and the the kind of recovery that came in the second half of 2020. So for those of you guys that maybe don't know, um, Neo early last year was struggling, right? They didn't even have enough cash to kind of make it through the quarter or the year. They got a cash infusion from the government in China and that's why they were able to take that money and really be able to make it through, right? So, um, they struggled, but they had a really great second half. Their shares took off. A lot of great things happened for them. So shares are up almost 1200% last year. Um, again, like I said, July through December is where most of this took place in the second half of 2020. Now, we are talking about um, you know what the what Neo stock is offering right now, and according to this article, which I do agree with a little bit, they're talking about growth at a discount, right? So. The relative and absolute weakness in NEO stock appears to be a modest and short-lived hazard. It is offering a spot for investors to pick up growth at a discount backed by ongoing favorable news, right? So they're basically saying, hey, it's weak right now. It's not doing a whole lot of anything, but that could be good because it is something, it is giving us the opportunity to buy. This is not me saying you should go out and, and you know buy a lot of NEO stock. I'm personally dollar cost averaging into NEO still. Um, not at my full position yet, but holding my shares that I do have and planning on buying more. 
And I do agree with this, right? I think that I'm okay with it staying a little bit low for a little bit because it gives me the chance to kind of put more money and move money around and gives me the opportunity to maybe buy a little bit more Neo before it hopefully takes off relatively soon. So the other thing that, you know, that came out this past week that I wanted to cover is the China Passenger Car Association, CPCA, announced sales of electric vehicles jumped by nearly 26% in January to the period a year before. Um, the strongest growth since, since September 2016. Um, so that's something to, you know, look forward to. Um, and then another thing that I think could be, you know, really great for Neo stock um, moving forward is that they are talking about um, spending $850 million to increase their stake from 86% to 90%, right? So if you guys, that this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, they received a billion dollar bailout from Chinese regulators last year amid the pandemic, but now they're bullish. So they're, you know, buying kind of that share back that the uh, um, regulators were able to take with the amount um, that they invested last year, right? That cash infusion gave them a little bit of ownership of the company. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about, you guys, this is something that we've covered multiple times. I'm not going to go into too much detail is Neo Day. They had Neo Day, great success, right? They launched the ET7 sedan, luxury best or industry best um, driving range of 621 miles. So um, that was great. They got the second generations of their battery as a service charging stations. Um, you know, great things came from that. And I think that that could be, you know, the, the kind of announcements from that were great catalysts and will continue to serve as positive catalysts for the company in the near future. So with all that being said, um, that and the deal that they got with the Hefei government, um, with kind of headquarters that were, you know, put in place that we covered also a few weeks ago, I think all of that combined um, really sets Neo up to have a great 2021. Now let's take a look at how we traded. Um, so let me go to the five day chart. Um, and we can get right into it. There we go. So we started the week here in the 56s, um, pushed up one level over above our 58 mark. And then Tuesday, we pushed towards our next mark in the 63s. And then Wednesday, we pushed up towards the 64s, came right back down below our 63 level and then couldn't break above it. Again, Thursday, try to break above that 63 level, couldn't break above it, hung out near our 50, or excuse me, 60 level. And then, you know, Friday was pretty much the same thing, down up, but then ending down near our 60 level as well. So um, not a great, great move for Neo as we were expecting. Still ended the week kind of green um, from 56 to 59, not too bad there, but did give up a little bit of those gains during the course of the week but the reason why i'm not worried about that just yet now we did move this bull pendant up just a little bit you guys uh, before it was down here um but the reason i moved it up is because we could be uh you know forming a bull pendant and it's okay to occasionally move your bull pendant to you know see if the the pattern still holds right so um this is the reason why so we got this line from the bottom coming up this top line coming down and what we're basically waiting for is, hey, over the course of the time, um, it'll get skinnier and skinnier. The range will get smaller and smaller. And then at the end, we could see a little bit of a breakout where it really runs up, right? So that's what we're hoping for. So let's take a look at future levels of support, future levels of resistance, and we'll kind of see what... Uh, what we have in store for us, right? So first things first, you guys, we have um, from a level of support perspective, right? We are below the $60 mark. Um, we are right at kind of the, well, technically we're above it in the after hours, but from a level of support perspective, right? If we open below the $60 and four cent mark, then our first level of support is this eight EMA in the 59.67s. Um, if we do drop below it, we should, or if we drop, if we drop to it, we should find support there. Um, if, and then we've got the low of day on Friday, which is 59.10. Then we've got the 58.44. Then we've got the 21 EMA at 58.18. Um, and then the 56.69. So those are really close levels. Um, but you know, it's, it's really important as it's going down, if you want to get an idea of where it could stop going down, um, you know, some of these levels, although super close can be really helpful because if one doesn't work, you can always go back to the next one. So again, eight EMA, 59.67, low of day, 59.10s. Then we've got our 58.40s level of support, 21 EMA, 58.18, and then we go down to the 56.60s, 56 high 60s. 
So those are levels of support from a level of resistance. I think the first point that we really need to uh, like conquer, I guess, would be the $60 mark right here. Then this high of day in the 6105, and then we can push towards the 63 level, and then maybe we push towards this top end of this bullpen as well, right? So 60 high of day of Friday, 6105, and then push up uh, to the 63s. We've got earnings coming up on March 1st. Uh, they're still expected to be negatives, right? Negative, right? The company's still growing, reinvesting a lot of their money. Um, therefore, they're not really profitable just yet, but that's okay um, because that's you know the way a lot of companies are before they really start to take money, right? Amazon's a good example. Tesla for a while was a good example as well. So. Again, watching this bull pennant, I think there's a lot of catalysts, and I think that you know, for for this week, um, depending on how we start, um, we could either drop to 58s, maybe bounce off that 21 EMA, um, and then start to push up. I think, or if we if we can capture this 60s, then maybe we can make a push towards 63 this upcoming week. Watching for the top end of this line coming down um, for a breakout. The breakout ne doesn't necessarily have to be at the end of this, right? The breakout could be it hitting this point and then just kind of going at it, right? So if you guys have a charting tool, I would highly recommend drawing this out. If you like what I'm using here, I'm using Webull, link in the description below. Um, it'll get both of us some free shares. So if you like that, you know, draw this line and then push up and then, you know, see if we can break this and then go up from that point on, right? So just something to look out for, right? Um, we can wait for the breakout and I do think that there's gonna be a little bit more consolidation before we see that breakout. Um, maybe we see an earnings run too happening in a couple weeks, but until then I'm gonna be monitoring the top end of this um, for this week, maybe looking, uh, if we do go down, watching for that bounce off the 21 EMA, but if we start to you know, maybe curl up, um, capture the 60s, watching a push towards 63. So that's what I had for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Channel. If you are new, comment down below what your thoughts on Neo are, and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day, and until next time.